Namaskaram. My name is Hemant. Yes. I'm from Bangalore. I've come here for the first time. My question is regarding ego and anger. How does one identify when is your ego and how do we curtail our anger? When you get angry, then you know that that's the ego at play. And why? Why does the ego actually do that to you? You are not... It's not your ego because when you were born you didn't have an ego. It grew slowly as society imposed its conditioning on you. The socialization process results in the ego. It's not that you came with a nice fat ego attached to you when you were born. The fatter the society is in which you grew up, the fatter the ego is. Firstly, you need to really understand that when that anger comes, that it's not you, it is the ego, the ahankar. Krodh is a, is a daughter of ahankar or a son of ahankar. If you want to defend yourself against anger, anger is a very nasty enemy, mainly because what it does is that it actually attacks the very cells of your body, you know, when you're angry you start shaking, there's a very slight tremor in the whole system, that is an attack on the stability of the body, of the cells of the body which are upholding this entire experience here, right? So the effort has to be clearly to, in the moment when the anger comes, to say no to it and to turn towards what? You have to turn away from it, so you turn where? Because if you look at it and try to analyze it and try to understand what it's doing to you and so on, you are empowering it. Every time you look at something, you empower it by your attention. So obviously you can't look at it, so you have to look away from it. Where are you going to look? And that's where the Antaratman comes in, the soul, the Antaratman inner, residing, individualized Atman. And when you turn into that, in that moment when you turn in, the anger recedes. You just start to feel your soul, even if you don't really feel it, it doesn't matter. Even conceptually, it's already half the battle won. So what happens then is that you... you reduce the... the negative impact on the very materiality of your system and so you prevent all those diseases that come when the system allows anger to take over. And why does it happen that when you're angry you end up fighting or maybe saying wrong things to the people you love the most or the people who love you the most? Because your system cannot contain the force of anger and so it has to let it out. It's like when you have a very deep emotion and you're not strong enough to contain it, then the tears flow, the same way you shout, because you can't contain that, that force, that is... So because is anger is like a... it's almost like a... like an electromagnetic bunch of waves flying around and the more porous your system is, the more it can take over. So you have to strengthen the system itself and you strengthen it how? By samarpan, by surrender. Why do you think people learn surrender? Not because it's a pastime. It's a very, very, very powerful way to stay in touch with the truth of your system and protect this system against energetic attacks which of course come in the thinking but it is the ego at play. So if you see that something is not happening right and you want to set it right or get it in a proper shape and they won't listen to you, then automatically you lose your mind, right? No. Okay. I don't. I, mean, I, mean, <laughs> I face that all the time <laughs> from morning to night and I don't. Okay. And the way you don't is that you bend down. You bend down to the truth, you have to bend down. You cannot try to control things, it doesn't work that way. That's the ego trying to push its way through. If you bend down and you act from the truth, nothing can stand in the way, it just cannot, it'll go, it'll just go. You become like this incredible instrument of truth that's just doing what has to be done. But if you go with the ego, 
I want it like this, it has to be like that, this has to be this, that has to be this, then of course, at one point you'll be angry. It's the ego's way of shaking you. Are you ready to bend down to the truth? To feel the soul, that's the point. It doesn't sound very exotic as a practice, but when you take up this practice, then you know how exotic it is. It's very, very powerful, very tough, very challenging, but very rewarding, because you feel, you know that that impulse is from the truth, and when you act with that, then it will cause you joy. When you go with the ego, then it's anger. Thank you. Remember the Antaratman. <laughs>